What's up, Block fam? Welcome to today's episode where we are doing a test ride video on the Indian Scout Rogue. Joining me on this ride, not connected though, Jess, her two wheels. We also have Brandon Picasso. Y'all be sure to go give them a follow. We also got a bunch of other people. Cycle world here. We got women riders now. We got all sorts of different press. Expect to be seeing a lot of content on this motor kaggle. I would pull the bike out here and talk about it. We're gonna go to photo spot number one and then we'll talk to you guys about it. All right, key down here, on off, boop, boop. Press once, let it go, struts up, we're good to go. This is the regular, what is it, 1133cc six speed transmission, dual overhead cam, liquid cooled Scout. They do have the Scout 60, which is a smaller displacement, and then that is five speed, so this is going to be uh, the more powerful of the two. I have made previous videos on the Scout, on both the regular Scout, the Scout 20, the Scout 60, and now Indian is offering the Scout Rogue. So the Scout Rogue has basically the taller bars, the front fairing different front wheel so as you guys can see larger front wheel immediately right off the bat I can tell you the ergonomics on this are much much more comfortable than the regular Scout taller bars forward controls oh my god like the seat height is so low on these bikes it's crazy pretty good bump there coming out of the parking lot suspension does feel a little stiff <laughs> How cool is this? So we are currently in Ventura, California. If you guys can't tell by the uh, beautiful palm trees, tropical environment. I know we've got palm trees in Florida, but currently California. What we don't have in Florida is the mountains that are over there. So I don't know if you guys remember, we actually gave away an Indian Scout and we basically made it into like an actual Indian Scout bobber. Changed out the rear fender, did the uh, tractor style seat that uh, Indian offers, the floating seat. Did like a whole new tail section, tuned it up with uh, Dynojet tuner. I think we had like a stage one on it. Sounded amazing. That bike was incredibly fast. Dude, this bike is great. <laughs> Braking feels really good too. I <laughs> oh, just had to jam on the brakes there. Fender's up high enough to give it a little boop. Sup. <laughs> In terms of what you're getting, like price point wise, the competitor to this motorcycle within that price point would probably be the Harley Davidson Sportster. Not the new Sportster with the Revolution Max, but the Sportster with the uh, Evo engine in it, like just price point wise. But in terms of performance, since this is liquid cooled, you know, modern technology, not just push rods, you're getting a lot more performance when it comes to the Scout between those two, if you guys are looking for a comparison. Price point wise, I think they're pretty, pretty similar. Guys, I cannot tell you how comfortable the ergonomics are on this thing. It feels really, really nice. Very natural. See, that's what we don't have in Florida. Mountains. I think there are like zero hills like that in Florida. <laughs> I am grateful, thank you to Indian Motorcycle and the Brand Amp. While I'm being grateful, once again, as I always try to say on these press events, it is not lost on me that I get these opportunities because of you guys, because of you subscribers. If you guys didn't hit the subscribe button, if you didn't hit the like button, if you didn't leave comments, if you didn't share the videos and all that, those metrics wouldn't be there and the companies wouldn't necessarily wanna work with us. Wow, this hill is crazy steep. You know, if you guys didn't like and subscribe and comment and all that, yeah, like I said, these brands wouldn't like reach out to, uh, to work with me. And so it's because of you guys that we are where we are. So thank you all, I appreciate it. Always important to practice gratitude. So let's go ahead and jump into looking at some of the controls on this bike. It's pretty standard for a Scout. Left side, you know, we've got the bar and mirror, not a control clutch, obviously. We've got high beam, low beam, left indicator, right indicator, press in and hold, or you press up for hazards, I think. Right below that, you've got horn. On the right side, also bar and mirror, on off, switch and starter. Now the levers, as you guys can see, they are scored on both sides, meaning if you were to accidentally drop the motorcycle and it hits the levers, they will break at the score mark, not totally off. All right, getting some lean on. It's got a much better lean angle. Oh, there we go, there's the scrape. Much better lean angle than the original Scout though. Probably because of what, the taller uh, front wheel, I guess? All I know is that's one thing I do remember about the Scout is that it would uh, scrape super easy. Lean angle was not the best. I did forget to mention, it does have a trigger switch up here, which you guys are, hopefully you're able to see, <laughs> and be lifting up there. No mid control, so like doing that, like lifting up off the seat, you gotta pull back on the bars. So I'm sitting here thinking like, I really hope these bars are tight. You know, we're going like 65 miles an hour. <laughs> You pull back and the bars aren't tight that would kind of suck 
So you do have the trigger switch here. The trigger switch, it controls stuff within the gauge here. So the gauge shows miles per hour around the outside. I think you can change that to kilometers per hour as well. Uh, you've got all your indicators in there also. So you know, if we're to do left, right, those are in there. And then if we press that trigger switch, it's gonna change from like trip one, currently at 190.8. Let's go ahead and reset that, press and hold to reset. So we got trip one, RPMs, which I'm probably gonna leave it on RPM. We got the voltmeter, so 14.1. We got the uh, odometer, so 191 miles on this bike currently. And back to trip one. So we're gonna go ahead and leave it on RPM. I will say one thing that I wish I had is cruise control. Unfortunately, no cruise control. Kind of curious if that's an option that you can maybe like upgrade to. I know one of the things you can actually upgrade to that I showed on a, a previous bike was the tachometer. So basically the RPMs in an analog gauge that they've made to basically come out the left side here. So that would be cool to have. That's I'm just a fan of that, you know, but that all boils down to personal preference. I know there will probably be a number of you that ask, like basically take this fairing if you were to buy it separately to put it on the regular Scout and based on the bracketry in the front, it kind of looks like you might be able to. I would have to kind of get in there a little bit more and see like where it mounts up to, but it does look like it kind of goes around the top triple maybe. I'm sure you guys can hear in my voice the bumps in the road. So the suspension is obviously absorbing it pretty well. Now it is, I want to say adjustable a little bit. It's not like overly harsh if I wasn't trying to talk. I mean, it would, would be no big deal the fact that I am trying to talk while going over some of the bumps. You guys can hear the inflection like in my voice. So it's not the smoothest, but it's not the most rough either. Some people like more of like a tight suspension. Some people prefer, you know, more of like a loose, cushy suspension. I think it's kind of, you know, more in the middle on some of the harsher bumps. I don't know what the travel is. I'll have to look up what the total suspension travel in the rear is, and we'll post it up on the screen right here for you. The biggest thing I am noticing about the bike is the ergonomics. I think that's obviously like one of the big focuses with Indian Motorcycle and bringing this bike as an option to the market. A new offshoot of their highly successful Scout and it makes sense like for it to be a bit more you know ergonomically friendly you know the rider triangle being hands feet and seat hands feet and seats like i said i had a scout for a while and you know we built it up we gave it away and i remember riding that thing on the highway and it sucked like you were holding on for dear life with that thing you know there was no fairing nothing to block the wind in front of you obviously but with this fairing i mean it's pretty much keeping the wind off of my chest it's, it's kind of hitting me like bottom quarter of my helmet. So the wind is like right about my neckline. What's interesting about that is that like, it's nice that it keeps it off your chest because you're not fighting as much, but where it basically places that, you know, based on my height, I'm also not getting uh, buffeting on the helmet. So I've got basically like the solid resistance or like streamlined aerodynamics, if you will, like from the helmet going into the wind. So it's, there's no inconsistency in the pressure. So whenever you get a little bit of that choppiness, you know, at the top of the helmet, that's what causes buffeting. And whenever that happens with me, like on a bike, I feel like I get a headache because it's like, you're kind of constantly fighting micro adjust against the wind and so I'm not getting that with this fairing which is awesome that keeps you from becoming as tired on rides as quickly so this is <laughs> I'm sorry about talking though like my you guys are hearing my voice with all these bumps I feel like I'm hit puberty or something I'm like <laughs> yeah we're gonna ride for a bit and then we'll resume kind of like whenever we get closer I'm really not wanting to continue talking on this bumpy road so we'll just do some b-roll of this beautiful California landscape like this is just Amazing. All right, guys, it is after lunch. We stopped in Ojai, California, which is this awesome little town. Super cool vibes. Stopped, grabbed some coffee, had lunch at The Nest. Would highly recommend if you guys are ever in the area. Very, very good food. So yeah, we're back to the riding portion. One thing I also forgot to mention about the uh, cluster here earlier was the, uh, the gear indicator on the left side. 
Also the clock on the bottom. One of the coolest things is there's a little USB plug right here. So if you guys want to plug in your phone, navigation, whatever, like USB powered, you know, charging system you've got, recharge anything that you have mounted to the bars, that's a cool option with it being right there. So yeah, Brandon, five foot 10, there he is. Anyways, I think we're headed to the mountains now. So been on the bikes for about, I think it was like 30 miles or so. I feel like I'm gonna kind of keep repeating myself because you know, I've already done uh, review videos on the Indian Scout and the, the different Scout models. So, you know, you've got the Indian Scout, the Indian Scout 60, and you've got that here too, but then you have the Indian Scout Rogue and the Indian Scout Rogue 60. The way that you differentiate it on the side there of the tank, as you can see, it says Indian Scout, but if it just says Indian, then that means it is a 60. The, uh, the regular Indian Scout being 1133cc, six-speed transmission, Scout 60 being 999cc, and a five-speed transmission. Honestly, like, it doesn't feel like a, a huge difference, especially in, like, your initial acceleration, but obviously, yeah, you get extra power with the increased displacement, and having that six gear is gonna be better for distance. I can say with the position position of the seat, it's like a solo seat, has that little ridge on the back, keeps you locked in, which is nice. But with my height being five foot 10, I do feel like I kind of want to like scoot back a little bit or push the bars forward. So if I were to push the bars forward, I'd be able to like scoot forward a little bit, be more like in the, uh, the center part of the seat, which is the more comfortable part. But I catch myself continually wanting to scoot back to like kind of get my legs in a better position. That's just for me and my height, you know, like those ergonomics are adjustable. Like I said, if we were to loosen the uh, bar clamps, push a bars forward a little bit it would be a quick easy fix the seat really doesn't feel that uncomfortable i think because of, like the fact that i'm sitting more on the back of it it does kind of have a pressure point after a while whenever you're sitting like in the middle of it as it's designed for all right guys so i'm gonna shut up for a bit and let you guys enjoy the views i'm gonna enjoy the views myself enjoy some of these twisties concentrate on the feeling of the bike and riding Let's go ahead and we'll uh, drop some beautiful B-roll for you guys of the ride. And then whenever we get to our next stop, we will continue with the test ride review. First look at the Indian Scout Road. Alright guys, so we just got done with some really crazy windy awesome roads. I forget what road they said this was. The bike handled just amazing. It does have a better lane angle, but still was scraping some peg a couple times. Thus far, incredibly impressed with the Indian Scout. Much more comfortable ergonomic wise. I think that's kind of what I keep coming back to. Incredibly impressed with the Indian Scout Rogue. Ergonomics, comfort, handling, loving it so far. Like I said, I do keep on wanting to kind of scoot back here just because of my height. But whenever I do push forward and just kind of sit like more in the dip here, it is more comfortable. There's definitely like more padding here and there is you know here I feel like I'm kind of sitting like right there so I need to either scoot forward and a little further back would probably be uncomfortable but pretty nice but like just where I'm placed feeling it my tailbone a little bit all right Jess so what are your thoughts so far on the Indian Scout Rogue her two wheels here <laughs> for those of you that don't know her two wheels I've been loving it the ergonomics fit me really nicely my tailbone kind of hurts so I would like to try out the adjustable suspension version of it but the bars I think the only other Scout I've ridden had 16 inch ape hangers and I think these are perfect. I've been really enjoying it. Suspension is noticeable whenever you're hitting some of those bumps, especially yeah. at speed. <laughs> it's a little, it's a little stiff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, I feel like now would be a good time to go ahead and wrap up my first thoughts of test riding the brand new Indian Scout Rogue just outside Ventura, California. Freaking absolutely beautiful. Look at this. Crazy. So once again, these are my thoughts on the Indian Scout Rogue. This is the larger version. So the 1133cc six speed. I got to say, I'm a big fan, especially being able to like do a proper test ride of it out here in these mountain roads. I mean, I'm definitely like pushing towards the outer edges of my comfort zone with riding this thing. Of course, it's a able to keep up i'm definitely not able to ride it to like the potential of some of these other guys that have been you know riding for a while but it's an incredibly fun motorcycle the ergonomics is kind of one of those things that i like continually mention throughout it and the reason i mentioned it so much is because they're so different than the ergonomics on a regular scout the scout is an incredibly quick bike especially like once you start to mod it and the cool thing about the scout rogue it's already going to have like a ton of options out there in terms of modifications that you can do to it because the scout has been out for a while so that's definitely a perk 
you know, there's exhaust manufacturers that you know, are going to make different uh, aftermarket exhausts for it if you want. Definitely a cool thing if you're obviously wanting to get the bike and continue to customize it, make it your own. There are already options out there for you. But I mean, who doesn't want to start modifying a bike after they buy it? You know, it's like you got to do an exhaust, tune, your better air cleaner, dress it up a bit. Ergonomics, awesome. Power, awesome. Obviously with the uh, lower displacement, it's going to be a little bit slower, not quite as peppy. But there are no like modes on this that I know of. I mean, I don't I don't know if you can change the modes. I don't think you can. I think they said with the ones that you like can't change the modes, it's like uh, road mode, like right in the middle or street mode. So you basically have like rain, street, sport. So the suspension is a little stiff, but it's one of those things like I was saying earlier, it's not too stiff, but it's not like too loose and mushy either. If you guys have ever been on a bike that has like just that loose, mushy suspension, man, it is no fun. Like the rebound, it makes it really like kind of unpredictable whenever you do end up kind of hitting a bump in curves. So like this bike is great for sweepers because of the lean angle, right? The lean angle, it's better than the Scout, I feel like. I'm still not like, oh my God, awesome lean angle. It's not gonna be like, lean angle of like the FTR or something, right? Obviously totally different ergonomics to those bikes, but all right, so bumps like that, right? So I'm in the middle of a sweeper, right? Good turn, I'm going 70 miles an hour. I hit those turns and the rebound, it's not so much that it's like trying to throw me off the bike. So that's what I mean by it's predictable. You're not like losing control of the bike. It's not bouncing. You don't feel like that moment of kind of floating, which really sucks if a bike rebounds so much that like it feels like you're losing traction with the ground. And so it has predictable suspension, although it is a little stiff, you know, for I'd say longer rides. You definitely want smooth roads. And these are smooth roads. After a while, you do definitely start to feel it, especially as combined with the seat. If you're scooting back a bit like me, like I definitely feel like I want to scoot back a little bit. The seat kind of locks you into a certain position. Like I need to scoot forward. In order to like be more comfortable i want to scoot back so that that kind of backstop on the seat which doesn't have as much padding and my tailbone is pretty much setting like right on it and so that combined with hitting a bump and stiff suspension not the best that would probably be my criticism of the bike my praise of the motorcycle is definitely the power the responsiveness the fact that it's liquid cooled and the ergonomics for sure the look of it I mean, it looks freaking awesome. It definitely has like more of an aggressive look versus like the normal Scout. Eager to see what people do in terms of customization for them. And I was actually talking with Indian Motorcycle a little bit about potentially customizing one of these as well. So that could potentially be a future announcement or video. If you guys don't know, we do work pretty closely with Indian Motorcycle. Been on a couple of the press events so far. You know, videos usually perform really well. Thanks to you guys. Appreciate you. One additional like point of feedback is the throttle response. And it's like this on like pretty much all Indian motorcycles but with the electronic throttle there's a certain position at which it's like kind of on off so like if you guys can see you know the amount of like take up there and then kind of turns on that does take a little bit of getting used to and then whenever you are in the corners you know whenever you're trying to like maintain a speed or like slow down a bit it does kind of create like like a jerky effect honestly the cons not really bad at all like like i said the seat the suspension all of this is stuff that can be tuned somewhat and then they do also offer upgraded reservoir like piggyback suspension which is even more adjustable so that's super cool that it's an offering directly from indian the final question i always like to answer is would i buy this motorcycle and and the answer to that is yes. Uh, why would I buy this motorcycle? Because it's incredibly fun. I think it's kind of funny they consider this an entry level bike because man, this thing has gobs of power. You can really get scooting on this thing. The torque is incredibly linear. The horsepower is just very gradual as well. And so it's basically tuned in such a way that it's giving you this power in a very predictable manner with that predictability that you get, you know, basically from the whole package. It's, it's very balanced. You get confidence out of that. Combine that with a low seat height, which makes a big difference whenever you're coming to a stop, you know, I'm able to basically flat foot the bike. Another reason I would buy it is also the value that you get. It's definitely priced very competitively for the market, I think. Indian is doing a good job offering like a good value for competition. So hats off to Indian. So yeah, guys, that pretty much wraps up my thoughts, feedback on the new Indian Scout Rogue. Once again, a big thanks to Indian Motorcycles for the opportunity to uh, come out here and try this bike out here on the press event in California. Greatly appreciate the opportunity. If you guys are considering getting one of these, like you guys let me know your thoughts on it. Let me know what you like about it. Let me know what you potentially dislike about it. Honestly, like I'm incredibly happy with the bike. I think it's, I mean, it's been a lot of fun to ride. Just total blast. Thus far, we have gone 111.4 miles on this trip today so over 100 miles for a test ride it's pretty awesome if the video was insightful do me a favor be sure to hit that like button if you guys aren't subscribed already be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to continue to see motorcycle content and content here on the blog
Blockhead channel. I think we're averaging about two videos a week. Real big focus on education for motorcycles as well. So once again, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Till next time, you guys ride safe out there. Stay vigilant. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.